Hello, I'm Tim um, from cablesfarm.co.uk and this is the second of my Walden uh, recreation videos. Uh, what I'm going to tell you about is what I've been doing in the last week towards it and then I'm going to show you some of the videos that I've taken while doing it. So I started off by looking at the furniture. So that's the trigger guard and the ramrod pipes. And so for the trigger guard, um, I calculated how much material I'd need. They're going to be fabricated out of sheets of silver uh, and had a look at that. Um, and then you'll see I made a lead model of them. Um, I then um, had a look at the ramrod pipes and uh, I've made a brass ramrod pipe I turned it up on the lathe and filed it down uh, and that can, uh, could be used as the mould for the silver ones or for that matter it could be silver plated and uh, used for the real thing. We'll have a look at that. Um, the thing that's been going on in the background all the time uh, is that I've been getting my engraving up to speed. Uh, the, the signatures on the uh, Wogden pistols are very fluid um, script engravings and uh, that, that actually takes quite a bit of skill to do to get it to look as fluid as the originals. Um, a, a lot of the early guns uh, had pretty crude engraving on them. The, the lesser spacing was rather bad um, and uh, they were a bit uneven. Uh, but uh, Wogden's pistols were pretty well, the signatures were pretty well done. So I'm having to uh, do a bit of practice every day on getting those. So at the end of the video, um, that you're going to see I'm going to uh, show you the engraving of a script name. Okay so thank you very much we'll uh, get on and have a look at some of that. I'm going to have a look now at uh, one of the other jobs I've got to do which is to fabricate the trigger guard. Now I'm planning to fabricate the, the trigger guard out of silver plate. So I've taken, in addition to the profile picture I took, I've taken an underview from the book. So I'm going to use both of those uh, to develop the shape of the trigger guard. And to do that, I'm going to cut out a strip of card. And I'm going to look at the drawing and measure off from the drawing, uh, following it round the shape of the trigger guard. So that bit will be the underneath and that width will be that. So there's, there's my uh, first blank for the trigger guard. I can actually draw that in reasonably well. I mean, we'll just have a little teeny, I mean, when we come to make this, we'll leave a bit of spare and then that'll have a nice curved end to it. And that end, I think we'll just have a couple of corners of it, but I don't need to worry about that later. So that's the under part. Let's check that I got the length right. Yeah, I think that length is reasonable. Now we've got the guard bit. The guard, I'm making these probably in three separate bits. So I'll start the guard bit a bit further down. Uh, and that's got to go round. Difficult to do, but not impossible. Doesn't have to be exact, because when we come to make it, I just want to work out how much silver I'm going to have to buy. Okay, I can see that comes to about there. Okay, and what shape is that? Well, I shall need to go to the widest bit probably. And the widest bit, check that with my micrometer. Yeah, okay, so the widest bit's about 24 millimeters. So this is not any too wide, almost exactly there. So that strip will be, so this is the butt end. Oh, this is the guard. Now let's do the finial. So we cut that off there. So this is all scrap. So 
So we don't need to buy silver for that. I mean, you can when you buy your silver, you can specify the width of it, and you only pay you only pay and the length of it. So you only pay for what you actually buy. So the uh, the finial. Let's assume the finial goes to there. Oops, goes from here. So it goes from that point there to. Now you can see the end of it. So there's the shape of the finial. So the length of the finial and the maximum width of that is probably about 14, maybe 15 there. Now if we use that design, so we've got 15, so probably there we are. So that's the finial. Right, so there's the trigger guard. So we can now work out, I don't know how thick that's got to be. Um, obviously the finial is, well, they're all quite thick actually. If you look at the profile, of, depends whether we, 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 whether we can hammer, no, I think it'll be flat on the back, the, the uh, butt bit. So um, that's going to be quite thick. If we look at this, it's going to be at probably two and a half to three millimeters. Uh, and we may actually decide to uh, hammer it into a slightly less than flat, flat. So put a curve on the back of it to save a bit of uh, metal. So we'll say that going to be somewhat less than three millimeters and we can the guard now the guard mm, if i got it off the drawing well that's not going to be much less than three millimeters so let's put down three millimeters for that so if they're all going to be if those are going to be three millimeters on the finial well I suspect the finial, finial will need to be three millimeters as well. So we've got three millimeters. So this one, let's just, so I can now measure those up just so I know if I'm, I'm going to buy, build two um, pistols. So let's have a look. I'm going to need, I'm planning um, the, the, uh, the ramrod pipes. I'm planning uh, to try and cast, um, yeah, <laughs> I've never cast silver before, um, it shouldn't be too difficult, so I might make some um, moulds for those, and uh, then we'll cast, do a sand casting, they'll have to be made quite big, I mean that, the uh, the pipe, the main pipe uh, for the ramrod could fairly easily be um, turned and filed and that might be if I I could get a scrap of metal so all I've got to do is to cast basically I've got to cast a boss for that okay I had a little a little further look at um, silver and so forth so I found a diagram uh, in the book for how the um, powder measure on the end of the ramrod works uh, and it's got actually got two screw threads in there it's got uh, a large screw thread which goes into the mouth of the um, of the receptacle and it's got a small screw thread in the middle of it that goes into this end of the receptacle so that you can turn it round, screw it onto the small thread or screw it onto the large thread get it there and on the other end it has a long steel taper with the corkscrew on the end so that's going to be quite fun to make uh, but we shall manage that. So that's got to be made in silver. Um, and, yeah, well, it could. 
actually have a parallel thread it could have a parallel hole through there we wouldn't have to taper it out so we could just do uh, just but then that's kind of all the silver so i've been having a little look at uh, silver prices and what's going to be involved in doing this job um, so let's have a look at that um, so i've been on cooks and gold which is my go-to bullion supplier not that i'm in the habit of buying much bullion but there we go so here's here was the trigger guard and the bits of the trigger guard actually that way around uh, that we measured out we got the sizes of those and we're assuming that it's three millimeter plate which is actually the thickest you can get um, and i measured up the the scrap silver that i've got uh, and it turns out i've got about 130 grams of pure silver scrap which i got from um old uh, uh, vacuum seals pure silver because it's nice and soft so here's what i reckoned uh it was going to cost so the um the silver is one one pound and seven p per gram and it has density of uh 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter so from the Cookson website you can just calculate given the size of metal that you want you can calculate the, the cost of it so <coughs> the bit for the butt was 31 pounds 40 the bit for the for the bow of the trigger guard is 84 pounds 46 the bit for the finial is 35 pounds 60 um, and then i reckon i need 20 grams uh, to cast up the uh, the first round rod pipe and say 40 grams to cast up the second one uh, and assuming <coughs> that i'm paying the same sort of price for it as that <coughs> although if i knock this off because i don't really need it uh that would be more that would be fairer i probably can make that out of what i've got and there will be some scrap uh coming off the bow and the finial not much off that because you won't be able to save filings so basically if i put everything in at, at full cost it comes to 216 pound 68 including that so if we if we say that we're not going to have to spend that much because i've got some scrap and i can make those out a bit so my estimate of 150 to 200 pounds was probably pretty well spot on so there we are so now i can um set that aside until i've actually ready to start making those um, and then we can uh, get on with some more things so i think what, what i'm going to do next having done that um i should quietly go and do a bit of engraving at some point because i'm going to need to embed that practice but uh I, we've had a look at uh, the trigger guard and the the um, silver i'll need to get from cooks and gold uh, and so what i did next was to take my design my shapes of pieces of uh silvers i'm going to need I'm, there are two sets of this by the way uh, and i cut them out of lead and bent them up uh, to make a trigger guard and then glued them together with instant glue uh, and then i filed up the profile well i haven't done the, the finial already but i've, I've uh, filed up the the bow of the trigger guard uh, in order to get the right shape for it so that when we come to make it out of silver i can just flatten this lot out and then cut the silver um, to match it's a little bit narrower i think than it should be i'll have to make some allowances for it but it will give me an idea of how much i can cut off and that will save waste because i don't have to file it off then so i've i've done that and that's quite accurately bent to to fit and I also went into the workshop and turned up a uh, ramrod pipe and uh, stuck a silver solder little flag onto it. So I've now got a, a pattern for uh, this, for casting silver ramrod pipes from. Uh, I haven't done the, uh, the, the tailpipe yet because that's the furniture more or less sorted out. Um, the other thing I've got to do while we're looking at what's got to be done is i've got to put a, a, a dovetail in the end of the barrel uh, 
to take the foresight and then under the barrel where the the barrel bolts go through i've got to put another uh, dovetail to take the hoops that go on the barrel bolts so there'll be one one dovetail there one dovetail there and one dovetail up there well, i've had uh, half an hour of drawing um, Walton signatures uh, just to see what uh, what they look like what there is so <coughs> this is basically uh, my output for the half hour or so I've done been doing it um, so each I mean all of these different scripts are slightly different uh, so they've got mm, curls different ways they've got uh, different endings on the tails uh, and then some of his guns had a gold uh, Poinson uh, with his name on it and some of them had uh, his name in, a, in an oval uh, in a swags so I mean that's what they're called so he's got this this sort of cloth thing curtains hanging either side of um, of his signature you sometimes see that in carvings in memorials in churches it's a it's a fairly common sort of uh, decoration around the side and so there's that's one i think there's probably a few more i've missed somewhere along the line but that's the basic ones so i'm i'm reasonably happy with some of those um the uh these these two at the top here uh, I got the. I think I got the the lowercase letters too too low. I think they should have been stretched up a bit. So I've changed that in these ones, and I think they look better that I've got uh, slightly taller letters in there. So now I'm going to um, engrave them or some of them. See what see what happens. Time for my uh, daily engraving of Wogden's signature. I'm trying to get myself so that I can do it uh, very quickly, um, evenly. So I'm trying to do a bit every day. So here's my today's Wogden signature. This is scaled for the lock, so it's not um, not quite as small as the one that goes on the barrel. Uh, but um, here we go. It's on. Wild steel, which have been ground down, and I'm using a carbide, uh, a cobalt rather, an M35 5% cobalt uh, graver, 90 degrees, which I've just ground up uh, or polished up on my um, half micron uh, ceramic hone. So here we go. So we've got to put in, I'll, I'll just work down there. Uh, going letter by letter and I won't go over the stuff until I've finished everything so here we the the down strokes are heavy but they're not all necessarily cut cut downwards they're, they're strokes that would be written downwards if it was being written script with a with a pen so here we go so an upstroke on W which is really a down stroke there we are try and get that as wide as possible to start with then the upstroke uh, as it would be, it's fine. Then we've got another, what would be a downstroke. Um, let me run that in. I'm counting the the graver slightly. Now I'm going to put in this. Um, the long stroke that's the tail so I won't probably do the whole of it all around in one go I might actually it should be going all right That's cut the way that is not particularly easy. It so it's cut um, basically clockwise cuts involving turning your hand to the right are not easy, particularly for a right-handed person. Um, 
cuts the other way are easier because you can turn the light the um, the the vice into them. Actually, you can't do the other way, but I, I find it much easier to cut. Them. So now we do the O, and we start off with the tool nearly vertical, cant it over as we go down the wide bit, and then level it up as we come to the bottom. Uh, and then do the same thing going up the other side, not counting it over quite so much. Bring it up at the top, there we are. And put in the tail of that letter. There we are. So that letter's quite counted over. Right, so now we do the G. I think I've got the spacing a bit weird here. Uh, Right, so we are come down here, count it over, straighten up at the bottom, go around here and join on to the vertical. Now we'll put in the vertical, uh, the main, what would be the downstroke. So we'll start off on the tail here and go up here and terminate. Being careful to push determination out not, uh, not flick it up so this the joint there there are little joiners on these script letters usually Walton puts them there so we'll put the little one in there right so now we've got the D we'll start here up to the top count it over to get the downside right Straighten up to get round the bottom. Round the bottom and up to join on to the D. And then can we get this one in? This one will cut going downwards because now we're going to cut around the bottom there. That's it. And that will actually join up to the next one, but I'll leave that until we put the next one in. So it's another O. So we get counted over here, going down on the far side of the O. Level it up at the bottom, round the bottom. Up the other side, counting it over. Up to the top and join it on. Now we can put in our tail up from the D and then we've got a little tail from the O joins up with the top of the N the N goes around then we get the main downstroke of the N there we are and then what comes up from there goes around to the next downstroke and there we are it's not turning the corners very nicely but there we go around there now we can do the tail here it's just got to come out very fine there we are so that's not bad is it I don't know perhaps it is so now we've got to put in the tail of the G and just go over and make sure we've got everything right. So the tail of the G, I think we'll put that in from here. Uh, where is it going to come to? It come to about there, I think. Always amazes me that you can actually join these lines up and you hardly see where they're joined. That one I haven't quite got the curve perfect, but not bad. Right, so that's done. Just maybe make that little bit there a teeny bit wider to 
give it some weight. There we are. Now that's done. Right, that looks quite decent. So now we'll get rid of the black and see where we end up. So, touch of WD-40. Solve that away and we can go and put a little bit of blacking in there. Let's see where we've got to. Leave it to dry for a second or two. Oh, so where are we? Not bad. The spacing's not perfect. So we've got to put in uh, the the tail for the D, which has not got put in somehow. And then we'll probably <coughs> we could go over and thicken up some of the would be downstrokes. Um, well, some of them, I, I quite like them being thin, but on the other hand, I think by the time you see that on the lock, they're not really going to be bold enough. So we'll go through that lot again, just thickening them up a little bit. Double your strokes. Right. Yo, just basically cunt that over and fish that out a little bit further. There we are. And that one as well. These strokes are not, the upstrokes are not, that's an upstroke and it's not usually as bold, but the engravers, when they're doing script, usually made them have some weight, sort of intermediate weight. So there's that one. Oops. Noticeable, here we are. Now the tail of that needs to be thickened up. We'll, we'll tidy up this bottom edge here, come all the way around here, and then we'll wait. Oh, whoops, wait till that one. There we are, that'll do. The D, give it a bit more weight. Uh, and the upright, we'll just give that a bit more weight as well. It's not bad on the white side, but I'll just give it a little bit more. There we are. Teeny bit on the upstroke, not much. A little bit. Okay. The N. The N is missing a little bit of weight at the top there. It'll be easier to put that in from the bottom, actually. And similarly, that M is missing a little bit at the top. Here we are, that looks better. There we are. So there's our Wogden, which is acceptable. Probably just about as good as the ones that were on there. Locks, maybe not. Oh, I know what, we have usually got some little uh, tail on the W which I haven't put in, which kind of wants to be mimicking the 
the mid middle line of the W. There we are. That's better. That looks quite good now. So there's today's Wogden.